Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of the Movie Clips Instant Trailer Review Show. I'm Andrew. And I'm Jimmy. And we're both super stoked to be reviewing the Gravity Trailer. O-M-G. So, um, Alfonso Cuaron returns. Yeah, since 2007 with uh, Children of Men, his first feature from there. He did a, a short for Parachute Tame with Nick Nolte. It was really good. But, but this is the this, this is, is the big his one. triumphant yeah, this return. Is triumphant return. There's a long history. Emmanuel Lubezki is returning yes, with him as, as who, the DP cinematographer who helped make Children of Men, you know, the, the, I, the icon that it is, the milestone in cinematography that it was. Yeah. Um, so, but this is uh, George Clooney, Sandra Bullock, right. and I mean, as the title might suggest, it's in space. So let's just dive right. in. Um, but yeah, this is pretty pretty amazing. This stuff. is an epic trailer. I got very, say, very I'm, epic. I'm very happy with, so, with what I see, what I'm what I'm seeing in this trailer. Th there, there's a long production history of this movie. Obviously, uh, Children of Men didn't light up the box office the way Universal hoped it would, and Universal was originally going to develop this movie with Alfonso Cuarón, but maybe that and a few other reasons it ended up switching over to Warner Brothers. Now, Alfonso Cuarón originally wanted Angelina Jolie and Robert Downey Jr. Those were his two ideal picks. Apparently well, I'm Angelina, glad he went with what what with the cast he went with. Right. Apparently, Angelina wanted twenty million dollars uh, to take home. Look at that shot. Imagine these that shot shots, in IMAX 3D. These shots are unbelievable. So, twenty million dollars in perspective is a quarter of the budget. So, you, Warner Brothers and Alfonso were like new. No. So they ended up now, uh, going through Natalie Portman. That didn't work out. And now they have Sandra Bullock. Interesting. 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 Mm -hmm. Now this is like the third time I've watched this, but we can actually see that she is a cosmonaut. Oh, is that the badge? Well, that is the badge of that's a that's that's a cosmonaut badge. I mean, that's Russian. That says, you know. You know, every time I think of cosmonaut, you know what I think of. And there's the Russian flag. What are you? Some type of cosmonaut. So, so yeah. So it takes, yeah, I was thinking of the Ghostbusters quote. You know, uh, what are you? Some kind of cosmonaut. All right, sorry. Yeah. So I mean, clearly this is either is it you know, present day or? It's got to be. It's got to be somewhat period based because of the space shuttle being decommissioned. Yeah, I, that, we were talking about that, right? So do you so, think it's in the... Well, I mean, like, it can't be... It can't really be something that's based in the past if it didn't happen. Yeah. That's kind of goofy, right? It's true. But, I mean, something happens. Something... Something real serious hits. I mean, I think there's, like, some mm -hmm. debris. It looks yeah. like a satellite or something like that. Now, that's interesting that this is all based on not, you know, some crazy you know, hidden thing that's yeah. going on. It's just like, oh... Uh, you know, but I mean, look. This is actually a this is actually a huge problem. Right. Space debris is becoming Insane. so scary, mm -hmm. and it's really it's really dangerous. I mean, there have been some serious close calls with uh, the ISS, the International Space Station, right. and objects to orbiting the Earth. They just continuously accelerate, and they're traveling at like twenty nine thousand miles. Per minute or something it's like you know, a garbage miles, it's like a hour. garbage shoot up there. i mean like that just even the smallest little things just gonna pierce you i know you know you well, no we hope. don't really need, have that problem anymore because nasa is not really doing much of anything anymore but it's just sad i mean but this still trip, they're, they're still sending up satellites and they just there's there's yeah. soviet era stuff that's just floating around up there right but this this shot is just oh like my god dizzying. i i there i have to say that there was a uh, kind of um internet scuffle for a while leading up to this trailer when the poster was released oh, we saw that alfonso Cuarón's name is really small and of course Bullock and Clooney being Bullock and Clooney my god look at that uh so yeah let's pause it just one sec so everybody was like why aren't they selling Al alfonso Cuarón? is he that much of a name and i think they did the right choice here warner brothers they're selling the teaser for the alfonso Cuar Cuarón crowd which isn't like a huge crowd of people that are you know Acolytes of Alfonso Cuarón, but it's enough to get word of mouth out there six months from now for when the movie finally hits, when the last trailers come out. Yeah, you can say Block and uh, uh, Clooney all you want, but right now, get the acolytes of Cuarón uh, who love children and men, who think he's a visionary, who are going to be there opening day. Sell them I mean, first. This, the, right I, decision, Warner Brothers. I can't wait for this, this shot. These shots are just unbelievable. So, yeah. Talk I about mean, the opening. So, supposedly, right. supposedly, rumor has it this shot is this just shot. amazing. Oh my God. Amazing. So, mm -hmm. rumor has it that because uh, we have to go back, we're gonna have to go back a little bit. Because I, I noticed that we I really wanted to like say, having movie. seen, having seen it, if you haven't seen it already, this is clearly after, you know, everything's gone wrong. Oh, you and think there's so? a, oh, oh, obviously, just yeah. floating yeah. by themselves. I mean, right. 
they got to be tethered to something. They're just tethered to each other. You know, I, I think there's... I honestly... I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. I think they're going to die. I think, think both so? of them are going to die. Well, I, I Did honestly, that really think it's work for the last I think it's completely Clooney movie, happened. The Perfect Storm? Did that really work? I think work? it's going to be completely hopeless. I don't think you... They can't re-enter the atmosphere, and they have no propulsion whatsoever. They right. have limited life support. And the way that he's being... He's looking at, like, the, the sunrise, saying how beautiful it is, indicates to me that he's kind of just accepted... His face. That would be a really poignant and beautiful. And he's just like, you know, well, it's just you so can, beautiful. You can, you can have that moment where they accept the fate, and then all of a sudden they're they, safe. They could have salvation. Well, but. I, I can only think of two examples that kind of correlate with this idea. Even though they were both based on real-life events, Apollo 13, they get rescued, yeah. box office success. Perfect Storm, it happened in real life, they all die. I'm not sure if that was a box office I, I don't think it was that much of a box office success, but... I'm sure Warner Brothers cared a lot about the fate of the characters before they decided to give Alfonso Cuaron $80 million to make the film. That being said... Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Children of Men certainly was a hopeful movie, though there was a lot of shit before the hope. $328 million worldwide. Perfect Storm did? Oh, okay, that's a success. All right, so... Perfect Storm, Perfect Storm did... And that was Warner Brothers. Yeah, that was Warner Brothers. And Perfect Storm's a great movie. Oh, totally. I mean, like, you know they're going to die going into it. Right, right. Right. I mean, it's not Well, like... most people don't... I don't think most people knew. It wasn't yeah. the most well-known story. It wasn't Apollo 13 in terms of... Right, right, right. No, ...publicity before. Um, but that would be great. I mean, not great. That would be terrible but let's, if they but, died. No, but I mean... It, it, again, I think it's going to be kind of like a character piece set in space. Right. You have all these ex- ex- extraordinary mm-hmm. pieces of action, drama, suspense... Right. And the cinematography. So let's talk about the cinematography. Yeah. Uh, Good Lord. So Emmanuel Lubezki, who did mm-hmm. Children of Men and Prisoner of uh, a bunch of other movies. He's done a ton of work for Terrence Malick, mm-hmm. did Tree of Life. Uh, Harry Potter just, just, yeah, Harry Potter 3. He's done a lot. He has... He's a genius. He's an absolute genius with the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so the rumors are, though, that one of the trademark shots the showcase shot in children men if you haven't seen it is about i think it's about seven and a half minutes yeah and there there are a few of them because that one that one was like right. stitched together that there's one, the car well, take which the car genuinely take, was a one the take. car take is is one take right although it is a motion control camera and there's cg like replacing right there the are they're, they're, they're replacing some stuff yeah the 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 handheld shot though is mm-hmm. is i think a truer example of it and yeah. it feels so seamless and they also had that with the birthing sequence. That right. I think they linked up two things and did right. a lot of compositing now, work. Rumor has it though that this is the movie's going to open. Gravity will open with a twenty-minute continuous take. Yeah. And there are a couple of shots in the film that are going to be wow in in the the double digit of minutes as a single continuous. I think take. they can afford to do that here more than they normally would in say Children of Men because it is right. They're floating pretty much. Yeah. yeah, they're floating around. They could have it. They could just mm. have a, a virtual camera that's just outside of the the space. I mean, exactly. they still have to get the performance from the actors. Um, but or Quran, maybe it's inside, you know, the ISS or exactly. inside the space shuttle yeah. or the launch. The whole, the whole launch could be one take. You know? Yeah. But Karan certainly knows how to manage special effects in a way that I think most filmmakers don't. It's yeah. he's insanely competent in that area. Um, one thing I'm I'm really excited about they, they shot this film two years ago this month, and they expected it to come out uh, I think last November, um, but they wanted to take more time with the special effects. Something that I think is going to really pay off. I think what Warner Brothers well, let's wants. Let's go back out of this, to some of these effects. Cause, yeah, I mean. These what? are photoreal. It's, it's this explosion here. It's really breathtaking. You see the the, the shock wave coming out of from like oh, the yeah. pressure. Yeah. Um, I can only imagine what Warner Brothers wants and what Warner Brothers hopes in terms of uh, I mean, just, what they get out of this is a Life of Pi esque kind of thing. It's a three D special effects spectacular thing based around emotions. Not coming out in the summer. I think that kind of Life of Pi-esque release is what they're hoping for, and I hope they get it because this looks just absolutely fantastic. And um, Alfonso Cuaron actually wrote this film long before, I think, Children of Men was even made. He said he wrote it with his son, Juan. This is just amazing. I think that's his son's name. Jonas. This is just, like, absolutely amazing. Yeah, that shot, especially when you have all those tight action shots just to have a yeah. wide thing, you just see the desperation. Yeah, so here, I mean, you can see basically this mm-hmm. is 
re this this uh, capsule is re-entering. You right. see all the, the, the debris or the, the friction of the atmosphere. Yeah. And there's not enough there's not enough gravity on a person really to pull them out of geosynchronous orbit. So it's listen to this guy. You know what you're It's pretty about. intense. I mean this oh we didn't even get to, what we didn't even get to the, like, the oh. post the post title shot. I'm sorry everybody. <laughs> I mean Oh scary. It's just terrifying. I can't. I will see this movie in IMAX 3D opening day. Yeah, totally. Me too. I mean, anything Alfonso Cuarón made after Children Men, I would have seen oh, opening day blindly. I don't but, even know a single thing about yeah, it. Yeah, but this just makes me. This is making me market it on the calendar now. So pros and cons. I don't even think there are any cons here. No cons. Uh, pros are everything you saw and everything you didn't see. Yeah. Um, Alfonso Cuarón, Emmanuel Lubezki, right? Something terror in space, but like a grounded terror. Mm -hmm. And I'm really Thriller. glad that Warner Brothers decided to go the route of marketing this as an Alfonso Cuaron film, as opposed to just shining the stars. We see the stars there among the stars. Yeah, we don't really need their names smattered across the teaser. No. Get in the acolytes of Cuaron like us. We'll be talking about it with everybody. We'll be making sure people who don't even know who he is or who the hell, what the hell Children of Men was yeah, to go but, mark this on I the mean, calendar. Immediately, October can't come soon enough. Yeah. So. No cons for me. I'm, I'm digging it. Well... That's two movies in Andrew's life. That's that. I know. That's a record. I'm enjoying cinema again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, for the Instant Trailer Review Show, I'm Andrew. I'm Jimmy. Comment below. We'll comment back. And uh, enjoy Gravity. Yeah.